Welcome, my name is Henk Stunenberg. I am Professor in Molecular Biology at the Radboud University Nijmegen in the Netherlands. We, Boris Novakovic, postdoc in the lab, and myself will present to you the work that we are publishing in this issue of Cell, which is part of the Blueprint project. And the um, publication is entitled Beta Glucan Reverses the Epigenetic State of LPS Induced Immunological Tolerance. What we are describing builds on work that we have done previously, where we had first steps describing uh, what is innate immune memory. In that innate immune memory, what we measure is what the cell remembers after an exposure of that exposure later in life. And the system that we have is uh, we use beta glucan as an inducer of training, so we are generating very active macrophages, or we use LPS, which results in tolerance, immune paralysis, and that means that the cells are not responding anymore. And this is a situation we see frequently in, in disease, such as sepsis. Patients cannot respond anymore to a secondary infection, and, and uh, the cause is a high percentage of cell death uh, among uh, those patients. Now we come up with uh, the question, how is the epigenome changing in this whole process of training and tolerance? For that we started with monocytes that are coming from volunteers, primary material, that we then treated with different compounds, beta glucan in one case, no treatment, and, and LPS, lipopolysaccharide, and we determined what is their immediate response at the level of epigenome, at the level of uh, the transcriptome, and so on. Then we take several samples in between and go to the endpoint. After five, six days of uh, differentiation, we are now at the macrophage stage, and we determine what are the epigenetic changes that have occurred. Are they similar? Are they different? What is happening? And what we see is that the macrophage that has been first treated with beta-glucan when it was still a monocyte, they have a particular pattern. That pattern is visible a little bit in the non-treated cells, but it's absent in the LPS-treated cells. The thing that was very interesting from our analysis was that monocytes exposed to beta-glucan or LPS were not simply different, but were actually opposites. They had distinct epigenomes, and because the epigenome controls uh, the expression of genes, they also had different gene expression profiles. The epigenome and gene expression together control the phenotype. And this partly explains why trained macrophages have a higher uh, response to new infection, whereas tolerized macrophages have a maladaptive response. Uh, it was at this point that we uh, hypothesized that beta-glucan could actually reverse or reinstate a steady state um, uh, epigenome and function in LPS tolerized macrophage. To test this hypothesis, we turn to our collaborators at the Radboud University Medical Center. They regularly perform human endotoxemia trials. In these trials, healthy volunteers are infused with low levels of LPS, which induces a temporary sepsis like state. Tolerized monocytes from these individuals were exposed to beta glucan ex vivo, and to our delight and excitement, this exposure recovered a pro inflammatory re uh, response. So this is a very exciting finding with a very important uh, clinical therapeutic implications, but it also illustrates the power of uh, epigenetic analysis, where you can generate a blueprint, interpret that, and come to a, a definition of how to treat uh, patients in, in the future.